you like to drive, uh, not commuting, getting behind the wheel early on a Sunday morning when the roads are clear, pushing a car on twisty pavement, finding the human and machine bond. The 2021 TLX is Acura's return to that kind of reward. No one manufacturer has a monopoly on great handling these days, so it's smart to look around. Acura starts with a stronger design and structure. TLX rides on in all new architecture now, and the overall torsional stiffness of the structure is up by a whopping 50%. It also looks more planted because it's lower by 0.6 inches and wider by 2.2. That makes a difference visually. The wheelbase is 3.7 inches longer too. A big news you can't see? The double wishbone front suspension is back, huzzah. TLX is designed, engineered, and built in the U.S. I'm driving the sportier-looking A-Spec model that's largely an appearance package. The head-turning Apex Blue Pearl paint is exclusive to the version, along with sharp gray 19-inch wheels, smoked head and taillights, plus the spoiler. If you want red leather, it's an A-Spec exclusive. It's also available in black if the Michael Jackson Thriller jacket look isn't your thing. The base engine was a naturally aspirated 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder. For 2021, a two-liter turbo four with 272 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque is standard. So powers up by 66 horses and 98 pound-feet over the outgoing four and in the ballpark of the V6 that's no longer offered. A high-performance Type S model will get a turbo V6. Choose between front drive or the latest version of super handling all-wheel drive. There's no manual transmission available, uh, sorry. Gears will be changed with a 10-speed automatic. I kept mistaking the drive mode selector for Acura's old interface knob. In addition to the presets, for the first time, there's a custom setting. For adaptive dampers, a jump up to the advanced trim is needed. The Turbo 4 in the A-Spec doesn't make any more power than any other TLX. If you want more oomph, you're going to have to wait for the V6 in the Type S, but this is not bad, zero to 60 in six seconds flat. Let's go. And you know what? I like the sound of this two liter turbo. It's one of my favorite in the genre. It's not a V6, but there's a little bit of a low growl to it. TLX is not related to Accord, if you're wondering. Even with aluminum for the front bumper, fenders, front shock tower mounts, and hood, it's some 600 pounds heavier than the Honda. Maybe it's the stronger chassis with underfloor bracing, rear bulkhead stiffener, and a new, more rigid center tunnel. Gotta say, the TLX is a joy to chuck into a corner. Could be the new suspension, could be the torque vectoring of the super handling all-wheel drive, but man, it's fun. Uh, not sure you need the adaptive dampers. The suspension setup is good just the way it is. Weight balance is better due to all that aluminum up front and stashing the battery in the trunk. It's moderately quiet in the cabin, appropriate for a sport sedan. This is not a Lexus ES. Grippier tires might be nice, but on this damp pavement, glad it's not running with summer rubber. Yes, this car is sporty. It's very fun to drive. Oftentimes that means a punishing ride. Not so here. This is actually fairly comfortable. And I don't want to hit that cap. There is no head-up display, but the interface screen is up high. Good for keeping eyes on the road and a bonus for the cat. So this latest generation of super handling all-wheel drive is true torque vectoring, not brake torque vectoring, and can send up to 70% of the power to the rear wheels and to just one wheel if it feels that it's needed. Overspinning the outer rear wheel is something not found on BMW 3 Series, Genesis G70, Lexus IS, or Mercedes C-Class. The EPA fuel economy average is 24 miles per gallon with all-wheel drive. That's a little lower on average in this class. All specify premium fuel. For everyday driving dynamics, the transmission is really pretty good. Nice, smooth, seamless shifts. But if you're an enthusiast, and this is somewhat of an enthusiast car going into manual mode, the shifts are a little bit on the laggy side. This is definitely not dual clutch action. 
There's a new brake-by-wire system, first used on the current generation NSX. It has a natural feel. As for the automatic engine stop-start system, it's on the smooth side and easy to turn off during stop-and-go traffic jam situations where it might annoy. <laughs> There's a solid suite of active electronic safety tech dubbed AcuraWatch, including adaptive cruise control, a driver alert monitor, and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Uh, cats, you're on your own. Both driver and passenger are cocooned by a wraparound dashboard that Acura dubs the dual personal cockpit. Not claustrophobic, it's like a warm automotive hug. And you gaze upon a cut and sewn instrument panel. There are sonic details too. The sound design is ear candy. There are the normal storage cubby spots to help everybody get organized, always helpful. Wireless phone charging too. A-Spec gets aluminum trim and a flat bottom wheel. Heated and vented leather seats with grippy Alcantara inserts have good lateral support in hard cornering. Not sure if you noticed the turbo gauge and G-meter that can be dialed up in the cluster. It's on the small side. Videos are terrible places to demonstrate audio systems. If you're looking for accurate reference grade sound, then the ELS Studio 3D system that this vehicle has is among the best that I've heard at any price, especially if you take the trouble to source your files and surround sound. Thin roof mounted speakers offer excellent spatial instrument staging in the sound field. The twin Telford subwoofer design tilts them towards each other for optimal bass response that helps eliminate vibration. It's part of the $4,000 technology package. Could be worth it. So you know, I've done music production. I used to score documentaries, so I do know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Let's move on to the user interface. Acura's true touchpad interface is a little controversial. At least it's different than Lexus's trackpad. Thank goodness. The absolute position touchpad is mapped directly to the 10.2 inch display. Watch, touching any of the four corners is what's selected on the screen. No sliding about to find the cursor location first. Now, this does take a while to get used to and no, it's not a touch screen. The icons are configurable and that's the key to making this system work. Best to put the most used items in the corners. It's easiest to find those by touch. Anything, including radio presets can be placed in the display. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. Kind of nice to see a new sedan, huh? Those are becoming kind of rare. Oh, being stuck back here all the time, I can see why passengers prefer crossovers. Room is okay. Um, we're both five foot nine. Head, knee, and leg room are fine, but foot room a little bit on the tight side. Uh, at least the cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent, but door openings a bit on the small side if you're hauling car seats in and out. Door pockets are a little bit on the smaller side of average. I'm a little surprised there aren't built-in sunshades here. If you're looking for a way to charge your phone or a separate climate zone, that's not happening back here. At least there are two seat pockets. Heated seats, no. The drive shaft tunnel is, I'd say, moderate in size. Now, the center position here is raised up so any adult that's sitting here is going to hit their head. Really, this space is good for two adults. Don't push it. Let's talk design. The outgoing TLX never gelled in my eyes. This one does. Familiar? Yes, but with more purposeful lines and more satisfying proportions. Everything seems more harmonious and integrated, down to the chicane DRLs cribbed from Acura's ARX05 Daytona prototype race car. The interior can be had in more tame hues. The deep brown espresso colorway with wood trim is rich and relaxing. It's just not available on the A-Spec. Tasteful ambient light piping is your co-pilot when heading out for dinner takeout. Something we're all doing more of these days. I'm thinking Thai food tonight. A special shout out to the fine folks at Costco Warehouse Number 1, where it all started. They're actually out of TP, but they saved some for me so I can do this test. There's a bit of storage under the load floor, uh, no spare tire and no place for one, so there's that. You don't have to open the back doors to drop the seats. That's lickety split quick. Would be helpful to have a ski pass through or 40-20-40 splits, but hey, if utility is important in your Acura, you'd be looking at an RDX, right? It's not like this is a Miata trunk. 
It's a little bit small, but useful at an easy five packs. Time for red light, green light. Green light, the new rock solid chassis that's exclusive to Acura, helps to make this a true driver's car, especially with super handling all wheel drive. The new standard turbo engine is powerful and responsive, doesn't sound too shabby either. TLX looks better too, which makes it more rewarding to walk up to before you carve up a road. Yellow lights, it's a little on the porky side if that means anything to you. That could be why the fuel economy is on the low side in class. The trunk and back seat are a smidge on the smaller side if you're deciding between this and a crossover. Adaptive dampers should be available on the A-spec, even though I'm not sure they're needed. Red light, the user interface may turn people away in the showroom. Owners will need to spend some time with it in order to get comfortable. Enthusiasts that value snappy dual clutch shifts will find the cog swaps lethargic. The base price is up by over four grand, which puts it out of reach for a slice of the intended audience. I'll admit, the pricier turbo engine and suspension make it a better car, and starting at around $38,500 and $47,700 as tested, TLX is more affordable than others in class. Nice to see Acura heading back towards performance. Now, if it would only return to names like Integra and Legend. Really, the TLX is a terrific sports sedan, especially if you get it with super handling all-wheel drive. The only thing this car is really missing is a panoramic sunroof. I kind of like those. All right, quicker shifts from the 10-speed too. Acura has given drivers a gift. This could have been another crossover. Head out and give this sports sedan a test drive if you want to save the genre. It's not as if you'll be sacrificing. Acura did this one right. You might have noticed there was one drone shot. <laughs> One, I'm not lazy. Right after my first successful shot, my Mavic Air simply and abruptly shut off and dropped to the pavement a good eight or nine feet. I have no idea why. Uh, yeah, batteries were fully charged and it was only 30 or 40 yards from the controller. So that's being fixed. I do have expenses when shooting these. <laughs> so I can hear the sound system as you go by. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the fog shots, uh, yeah, they're kind of moody and cool. It also made shooting a pain. In some cases, it was hard to simply see the car. And often, the GoPro lens would fog over so quick, there were shots that couldn't be had. Yeah, have to be flexible some days. A reminder that I started up a price quote service, and it's free. I really believe in getting price quotes when you're shopping for a car, even if you don't use my service, okay? Um, it's just a really smart idea because MSRP can be set very, very high on some manufacturers and very low on others. Anybody trying this service, please let me know how it goes, good or bad. It's important to me that this is a great experience and that it saves you time, trouble, and money. It's who I am. It's what I do. Hope you got something out of my look at the all-new 2021 Acura TLX. This is the end of the video. Time for the fun fact. This time, it's the Acura logo and what it means. If you look at it, obviously, it's an A for Acura. But it also represents precision measuring calipers. And if you look closely, it's also an H for Honda. Some even claim that it's an arrow pointing upwards that symbolizes the engineers at Acura always looking for higher technologies, though that's a bit in dispute. Anyways, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, because who else gives you fun facts like this, huh? Nobody, just me. <laughs> that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.